Hello, welcome again to noise management and its control. Today is the fifth day of this week and we will continue our discussion on uh, acoustics, some of the important terms and terminologies associated with the science of sound and noise. So, what we plan to do today is introduce to you the decibel scale. Uh, before that, I just wanted you to again have a very quick view of the range of pressures. So, when we are in the business of measuring sound, we could be measuring sound pressure levels as low as 20 micro Pascals. In some cases, we are actually interested in measuring even smaller sound pressure levels, even though we may not be listening to them. So, in the range, so so, we may be measure, interested in measuring sound pressures as high as 20 Pascals and as low as 20 micro Pascals. So, when I look at order of magnitudes involved in this, it is 6 orders of magnitude, 20 divided by 2 times 10 to the power of minus 5, it is 6 orders of magnitude. So, here is the uh, problem. So, sound pressure level typical I mean this does not mean that in all the cases it will be like that it can be between 20 Pascals to 20 micro Pascals. Okay. Now, what does that mean if I have to plot let us say on the time scale. So, x axis is time and y axis is let us say pressure. P, uh, so, this is p as a function of time. So, at some location I have a microphone. So, x is fixed and I am measuring how pressure is changing. So, at some points the pressure may be very small. Maybe this is 20 micro Pascal and and then at some points it may be very large, it could be 20 Pascals. Now, let us say 20 micro Pascals corresponds to 1 centimeter on the y axis. In that case, if I also have on the same axis, if I also have to plot 20 Pascals, then how many centimeters do I need? It will be 20 divided by 20 into 10 to the power of minus 5 centimeters, right. So, that is 10 to the power of 5 centimeters, which means that my axis should be how much? It will be something like 1 kilometer long. Uh, so, my y axis has to be, so paper has to be 1 kilometer long. So, because the range of pressures I am interested in is such large, okay because the range of pressures involved is such a large thing. What that means is that I need very large pieces of paper. So, I physically I cannot represent this entire range of pressures using this linear scale. So, that should be 10 to the power of 6. 20 to the power of minus 6, I am sorry. You are right. So, then it becomes 10 kilometers. Uh, it becomes 10 kilometers. So, it becomes even worse. Six. Yeah. Okay. So, the message still remains same that this range is extremely large. So, a linear scale for pressure it does not work. Okay. A linear scale for pressure it does not work. So, for this reason <coughs> we go for a decibel scale, which is a logarithmic scale for reasons related to practicality. Actually, that is one reason, there are other reasons also and that is why we use a decibel scale.
where instead of plotting the actual pressure, we plot logs of the pressure. So, then I can cover a very large range of pressures on a same scale on a small piece of paper. So, that is the importance of a decibel scale and we will actually see how those scales are defined. But before we see the actual relation or relations associated with decibel scale, we should look at this picture. And this is in context of what are the different things we are interested when we measure sound. So, these are three important things we measure when we are uh, interested in the business of measuring sound. One is how much, so suppose there is a sound source. So, this is a sound source, it generates some sound. This sound travels from its origin and it reaches its destination. So, maybe the destination is a person who is listening to sound or it could be a microphone or some whatever. Okay. So, there is a source and this is the destination. Sound gets generated at the source, it travels through a medium, it could be air, water, human body, metal, whatever and it is received by an instrument or an animal, a human being or whatever. Okay. So, there is a source, there is a medium and there is a receiver in general. Lot of times we are interested in figuring out how much sound energy is being emitted by the source per unit time or what is the power of sound source. For example, if I buy a loudspeaker, I may be interested in trying to figure out how many watts of sound energy that source is generating per unit time or what is the power of that sound source. So, that is one parameter we are interested in measuring. Then we come to the medium. So, I may be at some point in between, between the source and the receiver and as sound is traveling away from the source, I may be interested in knowing how much power is being transmitted per unit area if I am in the in somewhere away from the source. Okay. So, suppose there is a window open in a sealed room and there is a speaker in the room, I may be interested in un trying to understand how much sound is being transmitted through that window, which means how much watts is being transmitted per unit area through that thing. So, that is known as intensity. Okay. So, we may be interested in measuring watts we may be interested in measuring intensity and the third parameter we may be interested in is what is the pressure fluctuation which we talked about earlier when sound gets generated, when it is received by the speaker because that is what our ears are sensitive to. So, we may be interested in finding the sound power level that is the first important parameter. We may be interested in finding out sound intensity level that is the second parameter and the third parameter which is often used is sound pressure level, sound power level, sound intensity level, sound pressure level. In regular units sound power level could be expressed in watts, sound intensity level is watts per square meter and sound pressure level is Pascals, but this is for a linear scale, but linear scale we have seen we cannot fit it on a small piece of paper. So, to express power level, intensity level and pressure level, we have a decibel scale and this is what that decibel level, uh, decibel scale is all about. So, if we are interested in sound power level, it is designated as L w, this is the symbol for L w, L is level, w means watts. Hmm? So, L w so, what is L w? It is equal to 10 log w divided by reference w. Okay. So, what is w? So, suppose there is a sound source and it is emitting 5 watts of power. So, w will be 5 
and then we divide it by a reference value that reference number is the minimum power which generates minimum pressure which is sensed by our ears right. So, that is about 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. So, that is my reference power. So, sound power level L w equals 10 log 10 w divided by w ref that is the definition of sound power level. If I am interested in figuring out what is the intensity on the decibel scale, then I express it in terms of sound intensity level L i, i is intensity, L is level, intensity level and that is 10 log 10 i divided by i ref, okay? reference intensity and the value of reference number is. So, these reference values are for air, the reference value for water may be different, these are the reference values for air. So, reference value for air for intensity is 10 to the power of minus 12 watts per square meters and then the third parameter is sound pressure level, lot of times it is also written as SPL. P may be power or pressure, but in general SPL means sound pressure level, okay. it is not sound power level. SPL typically we say it means sound pressure level and more precisely it is expressed as LP, where P is the pressure, L is level and here the uh, relation is slightly different. Here it is 10 log 10 P square, not P. It is square of P divided by reference pressure squared. And if I take the square thing out, it becomes 20 log 10 of P divided by P ref. Okay. So, we will explain this further. So, we have L P is 10 log 10 power by reference power and reference power is what? 10 to the power of minus 12 watts. Huh? L w, I am sorry, L w. Then we have L i is 10 log 10 i divided by i ref and i ref equals 10 to the power of minus 12 watts per square meters and then we have sound pressure level is 20 log again on a 10 scale p p ref and this p ref is our threshold minimum auditory threshold pressure and that we saw in that slide earlier is 20 micro pascals, 20 micro pascals. Now, here is a question. So, suppose this is time and there is a microphone and the microphone is measuring pressure and the po position is fixed. So, it is measuring pressure as a function of time. So, here I am plotting P t okay. and when I measure the pressure, this is what the graph looks like. Okay. So, then how do I calculate L p? Because p is changing with time, p is changing with time. So, what is the value of p? is this the value of p, is this the value of p or should I use it as 0 or this, which value of p should I use that is the important question. So, when we use p in this relation, it is actually p rms that is root mean square value of p t. Okay. So, we take the entire signal and then take the RMS value of that entire signal and that number we plug in. Okay. 
So, we do not put individual values, but we take the entire signal for which we are trying to figure out the sound pressure level, take its RMS value and then put the RMS value in this formula L p equals 20 log 10 p divided by p ref. Now, the question will be how do you calculate this RMS value? So, some of you may be already knowing it, I am sure that you have learned this, but for purposes of completeness we will explain this. So, how do you find this RMS value? First thing is you mark a lot of points on the signal at equal intervals of time. So, you mark these uh, uh, points so that it ac accurately captures the signal. So, you should take sufficient number of points so that the signal is actually ac accurately captured. Okay. So, let us say this is point 1, point 2, point 3, 4, 5 and so on and so forth. Let us say this is p n. So, you take n points and what is p? It is actually p is p r m s is what? It is root mean square. Okay. So, what do you do? You actually go in this direction. You first square it, take the mean and take the root. So, P R M S is what? You first take the squares of all the signals. So, for the ith point it will be P i square, then you take the mean of it. So, how do you take the mean? you sum all the values of p i square and you divide it by number of points and that so so this is so you have done square you have done mean and then you take the square root so this is the process first you square it then you mean it then you take the square root you get prms okay and this number you plug in this relation for lp and you will be able to calculate the sound power uh, sound pressure level okay so this is important to understand that that's what it means so the next couple of slides i wanted to show you were related to what kind of power uh, decibel pressure uh, relationship between decibels and pressures so at auditory threshold what is the pressure 20 micro Pascals and that corresponds to 0 decibels because P R M S is 20 micro Pascals divided by P ref is 20 micro Pascals log of 1 is 0. So, you get 0 decibels. Let us look at the next number 6.32. So, roughly compared to auditory threshold this is 3 times higher right this pressure. 6.32 divided by 2 is about 3.15, right. So, pressure has gone up by a factor of 3.15 or 3.16, but on the decibel scale you have gone up by 10 dB. Okay. So, what that means is does not mean that if you double the pressure decibel also doubles. Okay. So, decibel is a different scale, pressure scale is different. So, if I am in a very calm room, not a lot of sound, the pressure level may be something like 30 decibels. Right now, I am talking and people are recording my voice. It is quite likely that my pressure will be somewhere between 40 to 60 decibels. If I am playing in a TV, uh, playing a TV in my room, not at too loud a level, then it may be somewhere between 65, 70, 75 decibels in that range. A loud car about 10 meters away is about 80 decibels okay. and we may have damage to our ears if we get exposure to sound on a long term basis if the decibel level exceeds 85 okay. and immediate damage can occur if the decibel level exceeds 120 
and the pain starts happening at 130 decibels. But, but once again, the pressure lay range is linear, the decibel range is non-linear. So, small changes in decibel level means large changes in pressures. So, this is important to understand. So, we have on the decibel scale, we have learnt L about LW, sound intensity level LI and sound pressure level LP. There are several other decibel levels also. We calculate decibels for acceleration, this is known as LA, for velocity LV, for force LF, for energy density LW, for energy LE and so on and so forth. Okay. And then there are some more decibel quantities and so we will not go about you know in detail for all these things, but the point is that there are lots and lots of decibel scales for different physical quantities and uh, it is important that we do not get surprised if we come across some of these other scales. It is just that we try to figure out what their relationship is and the mathematics is pretty same. So, I think that concludes the discussion for today's lecture. We will meet uh, once again tomorrow which will be the last day of this week and till then have a great day.